All right, I'm doing my best to get through more of these questions here. And uh, this one is uh, from Sajid al -Lawad. And the question looks like, um, I wonder, I live in the Middle East, and weather is so hot and hazy, and I like to take raw and black and white. I have the EM5 Mark II. Do I need to pay special attention on my setting? If there are any suggestions, please cater for the weather. So I don't have a problem in winter, which starts in October to January. Any suggestions welcomed. All right, so I'm going to have to generalize a little bit here because I don't know exactly what you're shooting or when. Uh, but generally speaking, if there's no clouds in the sky and it's full sun, whether it's you know earlier in the morning or later in the afternoon, you're going to be dealing with very, very high contrast type images, right? With very harsh shadows and um, you know very bright speculars. So... You, you need to adjust your exposure accordingly. Uh, and typically, you know, when I'm dealing with very, very bright highlights and speculars, I like to dial in like a negative two thirds of a stop. So minus 0.7 or minus a full stop when I'm shooting in those kind of conditions to protect my highlights in case I want to try to recover some of those. Now, the other thing you mentioned is that it's very hot and hazy. And, you know, that's going to imply that if you're shooting more telephoto type shots, you know, that's when like heat distortion and those waves in the images are more apparent. And also, if you're doing wider shots with landscapes, you can still see that in addition to this kind of haze, right, or softness in the image. Uh, and th really, the only way to mitigate that is to... Um, use maybe a polarizer, right? And then dial that in. You just rotate it, a circular polarizer, to try to minimize the haze and increase the contrast over the overall scene. But the heat distortion itself is going to be, you know, it's the, it is what it is. And then the other thing you might want to consider is something like a variable ND filter. So this will help you with like when you're shooting with very fast primes, maybe the 25 millimeter f1.8, uh, and you want to shoot wide open, uh, having an ND filter can, you know, bring the light down so that you can keep the uh, aperture wide open while maintaining, you know, reasonable shutter speed. Uh, you know, I think you can go up to one eight thousandth or one sixteen thousandth, which is usually more than enough. But having an ND filter just kind of gives you a little bit more flexibility if the need arises. But generally speaking, your settings really aren't any different when you're shooting in harsh lighting versus, you know, softer lighting. Uh, so. You just adjust the exposure to what you think looks best for that scene. Now, the only other tip I can give you, because you mentioned you shoot in black and white, is um, to use maybe a red filter. What the filters do in black and white, uh, specifically for the JPEGs, is you know anything that's not red is going to be darker. So if you take a picture of a scene with a lot of blue sky, this will bring the brightness of the blue sky down. Uh, roughly about one or two stops based on what I can see on the back of the screen. But that may help with some of the contrast. Uh, so experiment with using filters in black and white. And then if you're doing this in post-processing with your RAWs, most editing software has a way to uh, adjust the intensity of the reds and greens, etc. So again, that's going to depend on your software, but you can do this in just about all of them. Now, the other part of this equation, and this is very subjective, so take it with a grain of salt. Uh, but, you know, when I'm shooting very high contrast scenes, I tend to shoot a little bit tighter, you know, using a telephoto lens or just getting in closer if I have a wider angle lens uh, to minimize the number of elements in the scene so that I have fewer highlights and shadows and contrasts that I have to deal with. And I can use the few shadows and highlights that are left to more complement each other, either geometrically or in terms of balance of the overall image. Uh, so uh, the best way to do this is maybe show you a couple of examples. So let's take this image, for example. Um, it was a beautiful church. It was really big and had all this great landscaping around it. But it was midday and there were harsh shadows everywhere. So rather than take the wider shot of the entire structure and the landscape, I just got in very close. And I'm still at 14 millimeters here, but I got in very close to this cross, and then I framed it you know, so that the church is in the background. Another thing I did is I virtually applied a red filter to this so that the sky is much darker than it was. Uh, that way I got good separation between the church steeple and the sky in the background. 
Otherwise, the steeple itself would have probably been washed out a little bit in the sky and not stand out quite as much. And here's one more where I did virtually the same thing. I got in as close as I can to minimize the number of elements in the scene. I used a virtual red filter, and then I used the contrast between the highlights and the shadows to complement each other, in this case, creating a virtual silhouette of the bee against the flowers. And of course, there's a bunch of other things you can do, like maybe shoot at a higher elevation so that your subject is in the sun and the shadows are on the ground, or maybe use reflections through glass that helps diffuse the light a little bit. And then finally, um, if the contrast is too high and there's too much dynamic range, you know, you can consider bracketing and doing HDR. All right, this next question is from uh, Happy Ducky, and it says, I have an OM-1. As a relatively new photographer, I don't know when I should choose high-res setting versus focus stacked image. If I want a precise extra pixel image, when should I best use each? All right, these two features are really used for different purposes. Uh, you're not going to really be in a situation where you're going to wonder, should I focus stack this image or should I use high-res shot? Generally speaking, you're going to be very deliberate about which one you choose and why. A high-res shot mode, you're typically trying to do one of two things, sometimes both. Uh, the first one being is you want to get as much detail as possible out of the scene. So rather than taking, say, a standard 20 megapixel image, you would go into a high-res shot mode and, and shoot at 80 megapixels. And that way, if you want to print large, or maybe you're doing art reproduction, or you know, you're doing a landscape. These are typical uses for the high-res shot mode, specifically for tripod, tripod high-res shot mode, where you can get that 80 megapixel. The other reason you might want to use high-res shot mode is to reduce noise in the image. You can do this with the tripod high-res shot mode and get 80 megapixels, but typically people use this in the handheld high-res shot mode, uh, where they're hand-holding and walking around in low-light situations, and they want to reduce the noise of a static scene, of course, uh, in the image. Uh, and handheld high-res shot mode gives you a 50 megapixel image. All right, here's an example of where I was using the tripod 80 megapixel high-res shot mode to create this image. But I actually went several steps further and took about 30 images and stitched them together to create this gigapixel type image. And uh, I think you'll be pretty amazed with this because if I punch into 100%, you can see how much detail I can capture in just one little part of this image. And I'll back out just to give you some perspective of how close we got. And that was at 100%. If I punch in over here, you can see, I, you can actually see all the little chain links in this fence going around this tower here. And you can see all the individual bricks and everything like that. Uh, so this is what's possible uh, when you do high-res shot mode. Now, of course, you need a very, very sharp lens. I was using uh, my 75 millimeter f1.8 and I was shooting at f5.6 on a very bright day. So this is about as good as I could make, but I'm sure Others have done just as well, if not even better. Now, this is an example where you can use the handheld high-res shot mode to reduce noise in an image. So on the left here, I have the standard 20 megapixel image. And then on the right here, I have the handheld high-res shot mode at 50 megapixels. And these are the straight out of camera raw images just converted to JPEG. So I haven't done any processing to it. And if we just punch in uh, somewhere, what, I'm at 200% here. You can see there's a substantial difference in the amount of noise here uh, between the two images. Now, focus stacking has a totally different purpose with the idea being you want to try to get everything in focus from the closest thing in the frame to the thing furthest away. Uh, it's typically used in close-up photography and macro photography where the depth of field at those distances are very shallow and there's no other way to get things in focus other than to do focus stacking. Uh, but it's also successfully used in landscape photography where you do want to try to get everything as tack sharp as possible by using the sweet spot or sharpest point in the lens. But let me show you a couple of examples in close-up photography and you can kind of extrapolate the same idea idea to even landscape photography. Now this is a sequence of images I took the other day for another video where I did focus stacking, which is the process of focus bracketing and then stacking all those images together to create a final image all in camera automatically. 
So basically all I did is I put the camera into focus stacking mode. I set it to take 10 images of a certain number of increments and then push the shutter button and the camera does the rest. And the first focal point I picked was here and then the camera picks the rest all on its own. So if you look at this focal point here, everything is pretty tack sharp. But if I go up here to the top of the image, you can see that this is out of focus. Uh, and by focus bracketing, the camera is going to step forward and backwards the focus point to get everything in focus. So if we go over here, say a couple images down, you can see that now this is a little bit out of focus, but maybe this is more in focus. And if we go to the next image, you can see now it's changed the focus point to somewhere else. Looks like further up here, maybe almost all the way to the back. And now these chips are in focus. But in the end, after it takes all the pictures and brackets all the images, it creates this image where you can see that now the back of the laptop is in focus. And then also all the way in the front. Now, focus stacking also has the same effect in reducing noise as high-res shot mode. Not quite to the same level, in my opinion, but if we look at the focus stacked image here on the left and compare it to a single image on the right, and we zoom all the way in, you can see clearly that the focus stacked image on the left has less noise than the unfocused or single image on the right. So I hope you now have a better idea of when you might want to use high-res shot mode, say, versus focus bracketing and stacking. So to use the laptop as an example again, if I were to do a high-res shot mode of the laptop instead, I would certainly get more detail in the areas where I focused on and less noise. But, you know, not all of the laptop's going to be in focus. That back area where the memory chips and stuff were are still going to be out of focus. Versus if I do focus bracketing, like I showed, everything is in focus. I also have less noise, but in the areas that the focus uh, plane matches between, I uh, say, a high-res shot mode and focus stacking, I'm not going to have as much detail in the focus stacked image versus the high-res shot mode. So hopefully that answers your question. And for everyone watching, if you like what I'm doing here and want to support the channel, you can make a small donation on links below because they help me to continue making videos like this and they're greatly appreciated. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you again soon.